So here's the things I'm going to try to cover. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about some data on the patterns of complementary and alternative medicine use by the U.S. public. Uh, I'm going to give you some uh, highlights of what I see as our achievements to date and uh, tell you something about where I think these practices can have the greatest impact on Americans' health. Um, the data I'm going to show you comes from the National Health Interview Survey. Probably a number of you are aware of this survey. It, it is uh, done by the CDC. It, it is a, a pop, uses population sampling techniques, census methodology. It's a household survey. Interviewers go uh, to the houses selected by a, a sampling strategy uh, over-representing under my, underrepresented minority groups uh, to do are, do the best they can to get as representative a sample. It's a very large sample, uh, but for the uh, in, on two different occasions, 2002 and 2007, the CDC incorporated into this survey uh, a, a set of questions about the use of complementary and alternative health practices. Uh, and in the uh, 2007, the most recent, we ha sampled 23,000 adults, about 9,000 children. 2002 was about 31,000 adults. So here's what that kind of data tells us. Uh, using a definition which does not include prayer or spirit spiritual practices per se, approximately 40% of the American public use some form of uh, complementary and alternative medicine. That's pretty much consistent with the earlier surveys. The first uh, surveys of this sort were done by David Eisenberg, published in the uh, mid-90s, and, and the, these numbers are very similar to what he found using a similar definition. Uh, use of these uh, health practices is widespread in all demographic groups, uh, slightly higher in uh, Native Americans and Caucasians than in African Americans, but um, really pretty uh, consistent use in all groups. Very consistent, however, is a difference in genders. Uh, women use more complementary and alternative medicine than men. Uh, and very interesting and I think important uh, differences by the region of the country, including differences in reimbursement in different areas of the country. The area with the most interest in these non-mainstream health practices is the Pacific Northwest. My staff call it the camiest part of the country, uh, but um, it, it, the use of these practices is, is uh, quite widespread in the Pacific Northwest. And in fact, in the state of Washington, uh, legislation has mandated uh, coverage of chiropractic massage uh, and acupuncture uh, in all the insurance plans offered. That's the only air place in the country where it, there is consistent insurance coverage for this. By and large, these practices are, you, are paid for out of pocket uh, and uh, are individual or self-care decisions. A very, very consistent finding, and this always surprises my physician colleagues, is that use is greater in people with higher levels of education. Uh, it is greater in people uh, with PhDs and, uh, and advanced degrees than in people who have uh, intermediate degrees. And this is true even when one does what the best one can to correct for the correlation between uh, education status and income. <clears throat> 